Welcome to July 1st. Vlad is out. Kikuchi is out. Ryu is out. And I remembered I never showed you guys my draftees. Actually, I kind of did that on purpose. The draft actually now falls during the All-Star Week. It's not All-Star Week, and I figured, why wait any longer? I just show you all the damn picks. First pick we went with was Ted Ray. Third baseman, no secondary positions. He's a good contact hitter, has good vision, and is pretty clutch. His fielding is <laughs> terrible. He's got a little bit of speed to his game. Next pick was Peter Sykes, 18-year-old pitcher. Oh, I went pretty young with a lot of these guys just because our current crop of starting pitchers and position players, they're all in their prime right now, and they all have contracts that are at least three, four, five years out. So I don't want to try to have to figure out, oh, am I going to trade this guy? Am I not going to trade this guy? I probably will trade some of those higher salaries, but... It's going to be a bit, and I want guys in the minor leagues to just do it. Anyhow, I went with Peter Sykes. Next pick. Four-seamer, curveball, changeup, and a slider. He's pretty average across the board. His velocity and break are good, and good stamina. Next, we went with a relief pitcher. I think I actually drafted like four of them. We're pretty low on relief pitching as far as any quality guys outside of anybody in the major leagues. That may change with free agency down the line, but as of right now, I figured let's build those guys up. Let's pack those guys into the minors. And if they develop, cool. If not, we we'll probably trade them later. Anyway, Mora. Hard fastball. 95, probably gets it up to 97. Curveball, slider. Pretty solid across the board as far as per nines. Needs some work with the uh, control and the clutch. Next up was Curtis Watson, yet another reliever. He throws two fastballs over 95, a two-seamer and a four-seamer. Mixes in a uh, normal curve and a changeup to go with it. His per nines are damn good. We might see him next year. Home runs per nine, solid. Walks per nine, eh. 21 years old. He's a righty. Next, we went with Robbie Lowe, or Lau. Nathaniel Lowe, Brandon Lau. I'm not sure how you say this name, so I'm going to probably say it both ways just to switch things up. Anyway, 18 years old, lefty batter, first baseman. He's not going to replace Vlad Guerrero. You'll see who that is later on in the episode. Uh, 18 years old from Carolina, North Carolina, that is. He's not much of a fielder. He's actually just pretty low across the board, but his potential is, is good. He'll sit down in the minor leagues for at least five years, if not longer. Next up, James Ross, a hard-throwing lefty pitcher is 20 years old from the state of Missouri. The potential, 5'11", 181. He's pretty meh, average across the board. He's got a hard fastball, a hard slider, and a hard two-seamer to go with it. A curveball coming in at 83, which I think is topped out at 85, and a changeup in at 84, so he is just straight velocity. Next up is Thomas Quick from the Dominican Republic. He is a contact hitting center fielder. Not much in the way of power. It's kind of eh when it comes to his vision, discipline, and clutch. Not a bunner, but he is fast. He is pretty damn fast, and I'd like to see what he does in a couple years, depending on what we do with George Springer. Fielding, he's kind of meh, so he's probably going to play the corner outfields more likely. If he can get his arm up, he's definitely a, a, a starter down the line. Alvin Davis, not much in the way of contact, but is a power hitter. Vision, not there. Clutch, not there. Discipline, just not there. Not a bunner, not very fast. I mean, he's a first baseman. What do you expect? His fielding? Okay. And that's it. He is a switch hitter, which is kind of why I drafted him. Granted, Vlad is going to be the first baseman. Probably throughout the duration of this, depending on how long we play this one out. Kyle Brewer, another relief pitcher. Deep potential, not very good, but I do like what he throws. And his per nines don't really scare me off as much as maybe some other YouTubers do. Um, cutter, change up, sweeping curve. Not a bad pitch mix, and he's a lefty. We need more lefties in the minors. Trying to figure out who to actually trade for we first look within the division trey mancini 30 years old plays all the outfield positions plays first is good enough 
contact lefty and righty wise power and uh, you know durability wise we can definitely trade for him the Orioles aren't really going anywhere like that at 36 and 46 they're 12 and a half games behind us now I personally feel I should have to trade more in order to get a Trey Mancini or even his teammate Ryan Mountcastle who is just about as good if not better and younger but this isn't very realistic yes Mountcastle is putting up good numbers maybe not average wise but he's 25 and I'd like to think the Orioles would see something with him in their future plus he's got a renewal and three RBOs left so this probably isn't the move Mancini a little more likely they're not paying him as much we wouldn't pay as much for him he's because of his age and his numbers are right about the same he's actually hitting average wise better than Ryan Mountcastle the Cleveland Guardians also have a first baseman you see before you Josh Naylor he'd be a very he'd be a very good pickup just for the simple fact he's from Canada he'd be coming home good against righties he's kind of eh, against lefties as he is a lefty now, his fielding is okay he honestly seems more of an outfielder than anything due to his arm strength and it's not necessary as a first baseman to throw as hard though it doesn't hurt major league stats he has played uh, not all that well though he does have 20 RBIs to his name 12 doubles 237 average he's not getting on very much he's striking out a lot uh, given the amount of ABs he's had in AAA he's playing well but I mean he's only played 14 games Bobby Bradley the sexy pick of course he is a lefty batter as well a pull hitter he hits for power he is power personified fielding he's okay but at first, it's not that big of a deal. His vision is not there. It is pretty bad. Um, he has struck out 51 times in 161 ABs playing first for them. He only has nine home runs, but given it was in 44 games, I'll cut him some slack. 280 average, a 354 on base percentage in his contract two renewals plus two RBs, so we could have control of his services for five years of his franchise. The thing is, I don't see this as all that realistic either. I know, this also might not be that realistic, but to be honest, he's got only one year left on that contract. Miguel Sano plays first, plays third, plays both corner outfield. He has 13 home runs. His average is just, uh-uh, it is terrible. But look at that righty power if I need somebody else to play against lefties I probably will do it Chapman is already playing first um, in place of Vlad Guerrero we told him we would do so um, Santiago Espinal will play third occasionally so they kind of go back and forth um, between who's playing first who's playing third but it really is time for us to make a move is Miguel Sano that option I would never stick him in the outfield despite his strong arm third maybe does he fit in I, i'm gonna be honest with you anybody i trade for i'm probably not keeping past this year you may be looking and wondering why the hell would you want to trade for mike ford he hits for power he's got good discipline his vision is okay he's durable he plays first he's boring i'll be honest he is boring as hell not much in the way of contact as a matter of fact this year he hasn't even swung an AB in the major leagues. But that's because he's in AAA. 223 average, 8 home runs, 33 RBIs. He's a free agent after this year. He also doesn't cost that much. He'd be a really cheap pickup. You know, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have to trade much to get him unless Seattle senses our desperation, as they should. So we'll see what they might be looking to trade for in return. Remember, early in the year, we already made a trade with Miami in order to acquire Roman Quinn for the outfield. This time, we might be going to Miami for the infield. Jesus Aguilar. Last year of his contract, pretty good numbers, attributes-wise. Um, decent fielder, 
Not much in the way of arm, but he plays first, so we don't care about that. Pretty clutch as well. 14 home runs, 36 RBIs. Maybe, just maybe Miami is looking to move him. On top of that, his teammate, Garrett Cooper, hits better against lefties, is okay against righties, can really hold, can hold his own, I guess, and is even more clutch than, say, Aguilar. But Aguilar is a lefty batter. Cooper isn't. So the question is, actually, no, I take that back. They're both righties. I'm probably leaning towards somebody who's a lefty, but do we go to Miami in order to heat things up? Washington is 10 and a half games out of their own division right behind Miami. They have Josh Bell, who is getting better against in contact. Losing a little in power, but I'm not too concerned. Again, he'd be a one-year rental. $10 million, I think we can muster that. He has 17 home runs and 40 RBIs, and has walked 30 times, with an on-base percentage of 382. This might be the move. Let's be honest, we need either another lefty or a switch hitter in the lineup, and the Nationals are not going anywhere. He can also play the corner outfield, though his arm is lacking. Not very fast, but he's 29 years old. Again, we don't need to keep him past one year. It just wouldn't make a ton of sense. I'm sure he'd like to, hell, get a ring, another ring at that, this time in Canada. And I think he'd be one of the few players to actually win a ring. Actually, he would be literally probably the only player to win in Canada and in the US. I'm probably dead wrong. But who better to look at than the Canadian legend himself, Joey Votto. He's a lefty. Like I said, I'm kind of leaning towards that direction, getting a lefty hitter. He hits against righties. I would probably have to play somebody else against lefties. While his numbers are going down, he can still feel. He's pretty disciplined. He's clutch. 286 average, 12 home runs, 44 RBIs. He's walked 37 times. The major issue with this is he has a whole nother year on his contract. But, I mean, if he wins a championship for Canada, for Toronto, that is, I think it'd be worth that next year. Do you? On the opposite side of the diamond, we look at Mike Moustakis, who can play first, second, and third. He is maybe a better player at this point. Overall, won't is not the end-all, be-all. You know, he's not regressing anywhere near as much as we can see. He Again, he can play other infield positions. His numbers look about the same, only his average is a lot lower. About maybe 30 points. Contract-wise, we also would have to eat that next year uh, unless we decide to trade him in the offseason. So while this might work in the fact that I want a lefty and a guy that plays first, the money is just about the same as Joey Votto. Doesn't his face look familiar? Oh yeah, he played for us. Only last year. Actually not last year, a couple years ago. Silly me. Anyway, Brandon Drury, 29 years old, he, while he's a righty batter, he's not that bad, though he has not played at all in the major league level. He plays first, second, third, and both corner outfield. As far as his numbers in AAA, 10 home runs in 63 games, 61 hits, 28 RBIs. So he's at least hitting somewhat. And he wouldn't cost us that much in terms of prospects or even major league players if we so choose in order to get him. Also as an arbitration year, um, he could be a backup for us as actually we only have 25 guys on the roster when we need 26. I just haven't seen anybody that I felt was worthy of being called up from AAA, so I just let them stay down there. But is Brandon Drury gonna be on the move back to Canada? I'm not drunk, despite the fact we're looking at the Brewers, but Rowdy Telez is an option for me. He's a power hitter, lefty, though an extreme pull guy, it's fine. He doesn't play any other positions, despite the fact I honestly thought he played catcher at one point. Silly me, anywho. He's a good hitter, his fielding is okay, and I mean, he beat the type of power bat we could really use to replace some of Guerrero's power himself. 
He's got 15 home runs, but he's not hitting very well at a 223 clip. 288 on base, and his slugging is at a 455. So even with those 15 home runs, extra bases wise, excluding triples, he's hitting okay. Contract wise, we would have two more arbitration years with him if we decided to keep him. I know I said we were looking for a part-time player, and honestly, Dan Vogelback might be that guy. The thing is, he would literally only play against righties. I am not playing him against lefties. He can't hit them worth a damn. I literally might be able to hit lefties better, and I am not a Major League Baseball player. Nonetheless, he's an option for us. Discipline, 98, and power at 85, so that means hopefully he's not swinging at anything he doesn't want to mash. Sure, he's put the. I'm sure he's put plenty of baseballs in the Allegheny. With 11 home runs this season, through the halfway point this year, he has struck out a bit, but he's also walked. So eh. his slugging is literally only consistent of most of his home runs. He does have a triple. He only has five doubles through 82 games. Again, if we get Vogel back, that means against lefties, Chapman will have to play, or maybe even Biggio. Before we jump into any free agents that might be an option, we gotta look at Brandon Belt. He also is a power lefty first baseman. He also can play the corner outfield, just like several other guys um, that I've showed you. Very, very, very much disciplined, and he can bunt a little bit if we really needed him to, but I don't think I would ever really do that to us. He can field his position pretty well for a first baseman. Stats-wise, 15 home runs, 40 RBIs, and has walked almost 50 times through about 70 games this year. Is Brandon Belt the answer? I'm not sure, just because I actually think the Giants are actually in contention. They are in contention. They're only a game and a half behind the Dodgers, with the Padres right behind them, four and a half back. So this might not be the best of moves, but maybe Belt's teammate is. And here's his teammate, Darren Ruff. His age, I know, is pretty concerning, but I only need him for a year. Despite the fact we'd only pay him 3.1 this year and next year, he's good against lefties and is okay enough against righties to where I won't want to pull him out or probably even need to. He's extremely disciplined and he can field his position. He also plays the corner outfield. Who doesn't at this point? His clutch leaves a lot to be desired, so I don't know if I'm batting him at the top of the lineup, but he'd be in there somewhere. Uh, Numbers-wise, he has 18 home runs and 42 RBIs with a 290 average. Do we get this geezer while he's hot, while he is crushing the baseball with a 290 average, 394 on base, and a 604 slugging? Or will he freeze in the, in the Canadian air? If I decide to go the free agent route, Arthur Reyes is a solid choice in my opinion. I get his numbers are going down, whatever, but again, we only need him for a year, and I know he has no service time, so while I could cheap the hell out and not pay him that much and then call him up, I'm not gonna do that to him. I'd at least pay him 500, 600, 700,000, because I'm like, listen, I need you for one year, you can go be a free agent afterwards, I don't care. He fits what I'm looking for, a lefty, you know, lefty batter, plays first, good against righties, maybe not so much against lefties, and if we needed him in a pinch to play the outfield, he could. Ryan McBroom is also an option. Granted, he's a righty batter. He can also play the corner outfield. 29 years old, and I don't think I'd have to pay that much to get him. He doesn't have any major league stats. Actually, he's barely played in the past three, three and a half seasons. So contract-wise, again, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna pay him more than a couple thousand dollars. No quirks, so he might not really bring much to the table outside of, I don't have to pay that much for him. And I think lastly, we're gonna touch on Albert Pujols. I know, he's in real life a Cardinal, but I started this franchise before the season started, so he didn't actually sign. And I think when he did sign, SDS had already finalized their roster. On top of that, I've already signed him in a previous series, the Desert Venom series, uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's 42 years old. I don't think I really want him playing first, but he hits, he freaking mashes lefties and righties. 
righties, he is just, he's not gonna, he's not gonna do it for us. He has pretty good vision despite the fact he's 42. And he is 21 home runs from 700. While I would love to have that milestone, and I'm pretty sure I won't have to pay him that much, cause I mean, shit, 21 years in the league, dude, he's made a lot of money in his career. Maybe, we'll see if Albert Pearls might be the answer. Simply put, let me know in the comment section who you think I should sign, or who do you think I will sign? And I'll holler at y'all later. Peace.